I had a comment once asking for a ground RB tutorial and I loved the idea. So many people have no clue what's going on and it's only like 60% their fault. War Thunder can be confusing as hell and it never really gets any better. Most of the War Thunder tutorials that are available out there end up being really lame. So I was determined to make the best, most in-depth tutorial for this guy. I talked about everything. Lineups, battle ratings, crew points, how to spend silver lions, armor interactions, map knowledge, keybinds, and just general game sense. But I bit off more than I could chew. I couldn't go into detail for every little thing I wanted to, and the video was getting super boring. I'm not going to be able to make one big super tutorial for War Thunder, and that's okay. I still want to help all you guys get better, or maybe give you something to think about next time you turn on the game. More importantly, I want you guys to win your games. But hold on, we're not quite there yet. When you decide to play War Thunder and boot up the game for the first time ever, you're immediately presented with a goal. Unlock new stuff. You're also presented with a terrible UI and a ton of new information with only an outdated tutorial to help guide you through. But we'll just focus on the grind for now. As soon as you unlock your first tank, you're already thinking of the next thing. Now that you've got the Stuart, you want the Sherman. Once you get the T-34, you want the IS-2. And once you've got your grubby little hands on the Leopard 1, you're already thinking, this is old news, I want the Leo 2. It's always the next thing. But at some point, you have to stop and use what you have because by the time you've unlocked every tank in the game, you'll be dead. It will take forever to get every single thing that War Thunder has to offer. So just prioritize what you think is the coolest and focus on building up your lineups. But what exactly makes lineups so important? Imagine, if you will, a scenario. You spawn into a match with one really good tank, and then you die right away. Now you have the choice of spawning in a new tank. With a bad lineup, your options might look like two really awful vehicles to spawn in, leaving you without great chances to earn more points. Or if you have a great lineup, five really good vehicles to spawn in, increasing your chances of earning more points. Now when you play ground realistic battles, there's like four different points to talk about. Scoreboard points, spawn points, and then reward points like silver lions or research points. Scoreboard points are really only useful for guessing how many other points you'll be getting. If someone has 4,000 scoreboard points and only one death, they've probably racked up quite a lot of spawn points. If you have a lot of scoreboard points at the end of the game, that can give you a pretty solid indicator of how many reward points you'll be getting when you return to the hangar. Scoreboard points are calculated very precisely for any actions you do in a match. Shooting tanks, getting hit, capturing the objective, stuff like that. I say this because it's important to keep in mind that you actually earn a different amount of scoreboard points depending on the battle rating of the tank you're destroying. If it's much lower, you get less. If it's much higher, you get more. And that can help explain why you might have more kills but are lower on the leaderboard. Reward points are just silver lions and research points. These are what help you unlock new vehicles and purchase them so you can use what you've unlocked in an actual match. You can earn these just by playing the game. Not much else going on here. Spawn points are very important. These are what allow you to spawn in new vehicles either at the beginning of the match or when you're trying to respawn. And there's a lot to unpack here. Every game starts you with 450 spawn points, and right away you know what's going on. The battle rating of that match determines the spawn point cost for each vehicle. If you bring out your 5-3 lineup and your medium tank costs 150 spawn points, that means the highest battle rating of any vehicle in that match will be 5.3, because 150 SP is the highest cost for a medium tank. Each descending battle rating will also decrease the cost of your vehicles. Let's keep looking at our 5-3 example. If the highest battle rating in that match is 5.7, the cost for a medium tank will be 130 SP. If the highest battle rating in that match is 6.0, it will be 110 SP. And if the highest BR is 6.3, it will cost you 100 SP to bring out your 5.3 rated medium tank. Some quick terminology here for those not in the know. An up tier is when the highest battle rating in that match is above the highest battle rating in your lineup. Say if you're playing 4-3 and the highest BR in that match is 5-0. 
when it's a full 1.0 BR above your highest rated vehicle, that's called a full up tier because it can't get any higher than that. Like if you're using a 6.3 lineup and you're in a full up tier, you would be in a 7.3 game. A down tier or full down tier is the exact same, just the other way around. If the best way to earn reward points is by scoring high on the leaderboard, then you can imagine why it's important to have so many great vehicles all crewed in one lineup. But you can't be out here playing your brand new 6-7 tank with all your favorite tanks from 5-7. That's just not going to work. Those 5-7 tanks won't perform quite as well when they're not at their BR, you might say. You might have to be patient and unlocking a few vehicles at similar battle ratings before moving up and understand that it takes time to build up these presets. I can play a ton of different lineups and switch between nations whenever I feel like it. I can go up, I can go down, if this isn't working for me I can come over here and I can keep playing the game for longer and not get burnt out as fast. Don't like the map? Change it. Don't like the up tiers? Change it. Don't like the teams? Change it. Don't like the queues? Change it. Don't like your friends? Change it. If you don't know by now, I don't really have any other way of putting this. I have a Discord server. You can come hang out and play War Thunder with me whenever you like. I'm on here often and we already have over 500 people who've joined. If you're ever getting tired of the grind, come stop by and say hi. And this is just hollow bone ammunition. This is actually Critical Duty uh, from Hornady. Oh, that's I'm gonna turn it around and put it in my mouth. No. But what does a good lineup look like? What are some examples? I'm thinking Germany 5-7, US 6-3, Russia 9-7, France 7-3, Germany 7-3, Russia 7-3, Britain 7-3, and I am definitely not thinking US 7-3. These lineups are amazing for a bunch of different reasons, each in their own way. But if I had to simplify why these lineups are so good, I would say it's because there are two to three really powerful vehicles at the same BR that you can spawn in back to back. Being able to spawn them in one after the other on pretty much any map will yield high results. And there is no higher result than being able to spawn in the nuke. At some point, you'll find yourself in a position where winning a match just isn't enough anymore. You have to take it to the next step, and that's where the nuke comes in. Once you earn 2,500 spawn points at 6.7 games or higher, you can spawn in a bomber equipped with a nuclear bomb. Take off from the runway, fly to the battlefield, drop the bomb, and you've won the game. Simple. Well, actually, it's a little more difficult than that. Like really difficult, but there are some things you can do to stack the odds in your favor. Skill alone is not what it takes to get nukes. Maps, teams, battle ratings, and most controllable lineups. The best lineup in the game. What is it? Russia 9-7, China 8-3, US top tier, Germany 9-7, no. These lineups are nothing compared to the best. It's not a favorite. It's not some group of tanks that I googled the highest win rates on Thunder Skill. It's not taken from some back alley polling. It's just the lineup that I've gotten the most nukes with. And I wanted to share it with you all. has three important factors for making it the best. The lineup, the teams, and a secret third factor that many people don't often notice or think about. Much like any good lineup, you have two incredible tanks and three more great ones, just in case. The TAM 2IP and Class 3P are some of the best tanks in the game right now. DM33, Laser Rangefinder, 6.5 second reload, ridiculous survivability, and a fantastic top speed. I really shouldn't have to say anything more. Then for backup, you can bring out the Leo A1A1, the Jack Panzer, or the Term 3. And just to really appreciate the Term 3 here for a second, this thing gets 105 5 APDS, a 5 second autoloader, and a 30mm autocannon. Lots of fun and really good too. The teams. 
Germany teams have perfected the losing strategy. After one or maybe two spawns, the majority of your team will have vanished. If you find yourself more than eight minutes into a match trying to capture the objectives all by yourself wondering, where is my team? Then you must be playing Germany. However, don't let this get you down. Right next to your team's deaths are their kills. And you'll also notice that's gonna be non-existent too. This can be a good thing. While your team is out there not getting kills, you could be out there cleaning up all the remaining enemies that were distracted with killing your teammates. When you think you've lost and you're down to just two teammates left, spawn the nuke. Oh, I got another kill. See, that's yeah, how easy the game is right there. You see that shit? Just got another kill. See, I'm just, I'm just blessed. Whoa, what is my team? Single-handedly winning this game right now. What is that fucking team? And lastly, SBAA. It is the cheapest vehicle type to spawn into a match, and that's usually because SBAA isn't doing much. But if you find a decent anti-air, throw that thing in your lineup just in case. And Germany doesn't have some random SBAA in this lineup. It has the Gepard. The Gepard is a fantastic vehicle to bring out on flanks or to destroy light tanks, but I use it for something much more important. See, the combination of being a pretty decent tank and also being the cheapest in the lineup up means that the Gopard will likely be the deciding factor in whether or not you get the nuke. If you die just short of that 2500 spawn point cost, you are not going to want to spend another 400 SP thinking I can get 4 more kills. No, you're going to spawn into the cheapest thing and cross your fingers that that can get you over the finish line. And this is where I find the Gopard to be at its best. I think like half of my nukes with this lineup, I got the last little bit with the Gopard. It is so important to bring a AA in your lineup if you're hunting nukes. And the better the AA is, the more likely you can get those sweet, sweet nukes. I try to be a righteous man. Talk to the Lord most every day. Sometimes the struggle can do me wrong. I keep to the path, won't go astray. When I stop falling over, my feelings. Lastly, it's important to pick the correct tank. Not every tank is going to work on every map. If you queue into a large open map with big sight lines, don't pick the tank without a laser rangefinder. If you queue into a small urban map, don't pick the giant land ship that can't turn around corners very well. Understanding what makes your tank work and what doesn't is extremely important if you want to do well. Certain positions on a map are more effective if you bring the correct vehicle. Some maps will feel like a nightmare if you choose to spawn into the wrong thing. And for the love of all that is holy, please, please stop bringing the M22 to top tier.